All right, friends. So at this point, you've uh, written your thesis. You've hopefully defended your thesis and successfully gotten through the whole process. The big question is, now what? All right. And uh, I'm going to answer this on two levels. You know, one, what do you do now in the next step of your career? Right. Uh, and then also, what do you do now with the research that you've just completed? What does the future hold for that? All right. So hopefully my prayer for all of you is that this program be just a step towards another degree, like a PsyD or a PhD in psychology. Um, that's one route we'll talk about in a second. And then also, too, what happens with research in the event that, for example, you're not planning on going on to another degree if you've already got a, uh, another career step lined up. Um, so first of all, with this with the next step. This thesis is an essential part of your application to go on to additional graduate programs. Um, this body of work represents your ability to carry a piece of research all the way through from the conception and planning phase all the way to the back end of presentation and defense. So as I said, well done already, but this is going to be so important because graduate programs are going to look at what you've created and you know judge your ability to move on through graduate studies based largely on, on this piece of work. Um, in that sense, too, when you go to a, especially like a, sci, a, a PhD program or a PsyD program that's heavy on research, ideally this research will feed into your next study. So at the part of your chapter five where you said future research might include blah, 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 now is the opportunity to do that. So when you go on to a, a, a doc program, Many of them will ask you, okay, so what do you want to do for your research project, for your dissertation? Um, you know, what do you see as your next steps in your research career? Ideally, it would feed right out of your thesis. So it wasn't just idle thoughts of, oh, well, future researchers could do this. No, you now are the future researcher. So what are you going to do? Um, in fact, some doc programs will not even accept you without a, um, a dissertation uh, hypothesis or, or uh, research question, something like that, that's going to build your larger work. You're accepted in many of these programs, for example, on the condition that this is what you research for your dissertation. So um, I would su suggest build off of the work you've just completed because you already have a great deal of familiarity with it. You can uh, utilize um, some of the uh, sources you've already found. It's just a great starting point. Um, the other side of this, too, is your research you know, through a thesis is doesn't cover all of what you've discovered. Obviously, we've already talked about post hoc analysis. So there's plenty of other things that you might explore with the data set that you've already created through your study. Um, what I would recommend, regardless of whether or not this is the end of your um, uh, degrees for psychology or if you're going on to another degree in, in some other field even, right? you have to try and get this disseminated. Uh, You'll notice in the background here is this website for what's called SPSP, the Society for Personality and Social Psychology. This is an organization to which I belong. Uh, being a social psychologist, obviously, it makes sense for me. But what I would really encourage you to do, um, in fact, many of you probably already done over the course of your master's studies, is join a group. Obviously, this one here is really trying to get the members to come in with a very um, eye-catching sort of uh, gif it's got going there, right? But become a member of one of these groups and then also try and disseminate your work through them. So for example, this organization has multiple small conferences over the course of the year, but their annual conference is in February. Uh, this year it's in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, you can attend virtually or face-to-face, -face, but they have presentations, poster sections. In fact, they even have this, uh, and I think it's on the website, I think you can find it uh, here, da, 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 professional development. Yeah, so here they have actually uh, good networking opportunities for young researchers. So if you've just completed your master's, as many of you have just done, there's good ways to get connected to other researchers who are in the same stage of their career. They even um, consider publication work for early career psychologists, which is you guys, right? So there's even a subcategory. So you're not you're not competing for a place to present amongst people who have been publishing for the last 40 years you're competing against other people who are at this stage of their career, which is, I think, brilliant, All right? So this is an excellent outlet. And SPSP as a, as a group um, has a very broad selection of what they uh, feature in terms of their publications and their um, uh, conferences. So if you're like, well, I don't know if mine is social psychology or if it fits in this, a lot of my students who go through this master's program um, are eligible to be accepted for this sort of um, research publication uh, just because of the nature of what they tend to accept and, and a lot of the research that comes from our master's program. So I would really encourage this. 
um, not just the membership, but also um, submitting. Uh, it's a little late actually in the year. So at this point, if you were to submit, you couldn't submit today, for example, for the uh, February conference. I believe the submission opens, the portal opens, I think, in early September and then closes at the very beginning of October. So it's, it's of course, passed. But for the next cycle that's available, um, there's also more regional uh, memberships. So there's... Uh, uh, the Southern Psychological Association, um, obviously APA, which is worldwide. SPSP is worldwide too. Um, but the more organizations that you can get involved with like this, the better off you can be uh, as you move forward in your career. Uh, something I want to point out, by the way, is you can actually, depending on the size of your study and the amount of data you've got, you can actually parse out smaller studies from just the single piece of work that you've done, right? So you might say, okay, I've, I've written a, a smaller study out of my previous one, I've utilized the data in a new way for this particular uh, group, for SPSP, but I've got another analysis that looks an entirely different uh, component of the data, and I'm going to send it off to APA or or um, um, it's a, a Southern uh, Society of Psychologists, right? Whatever organization, you can actually make several studies out of just a single piece of research. Uh, and In fact, a few of our students have done that, where they're trying to present from the same data set, but different analyses. So, like I said, I'd really encourage this. Uh, if necessary, you can collaborate with a professor. I actually uh, collaborate with several of my students in this respect, but you gotta disseminate this. You can't let this be the end of your research. Um, and there might even be professional uh, groups that are interested in this. So um, if you are, uh, one of our students, for example, did research on COVID, that would be useful for um, you know regional hospitals, local hospitals to have that information. Um, a lot of our veterans will do research on veterans uh, so they can actually uh, share this with the VA uh, and different other, other veterans groups. So don't let this be the end of your study. The now what component, even though it feels like this is the final step and now you're done and you're closing the book on this, um, this actually ideally would be the perfect segue into new and uh, additional opportunities in your career. And should you need guidance on this, if, if this this little lecture has kind of piqued your interest in it, please contact myself um, or um, your, your advisor or whoever, but I'm absolutely happy to serve as your point of contact. Uh, as I've said before, my email address is jpe L L E T I E R at hbu.edu. Um, and uh, I'm happy to work with you on making sure that this is just the beginning of your research uh, as opposed to the end.